What is going on guys? Welcome to your very first tutorial in advanced game development using the UDK. Now, a lot of you guys already watched my beginner series in the UDK, and for those of you who have not, I strongly recommend you go check out that series. It gives you basically an introduction to the core concepts behind UDK, and this series right here is going to be for the more advanced stuff. So I didn't want to put it all in one series, so that's why I decided to split it up. But for those of you who have completed my series, welcome back. For those of you who just, you know, are hard-headed and you guys decided you are not going to watch my beginner series, then let me introduce myself. My name is Bucky Roberts, and uh, yeah, that's my introduction. There you go. That's all you get. So anyways, like I said, this tutorial series is for more of the advanced concepts concerning the UDK. So we're going to be starting in this tutorial, which is working with physics objects. So in this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is... Well, in the last tutorial, what we did is we basically learned how to add things like static meshes, which are basically just, you know, plain old walls or things that don't move. Now, in order to make something move, we learned about something called matinee. And, you know, this was if you have a door that you bump into, you can open it. Or if you want to play a simple animation, you can do that. But it really didn't provide an incredibly interactive gaming environment. So that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do in this tutorial through the use of physics objects. Now let me display what a physics object is real quick or let me uh, talk you guys through it. If you have like a box or you know say a tank or a piece of wood in your game you can go ahead and shoot it but if it was a static mesh it would just stay there it wouldn't move but in real life if you shot it it you know, would move around bounce around that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial right here so with all my talking let me go ahead and shut up and finally show you guys how to do this so I'll go ahead and open the content browser and clear everything out by hitting all assets x and clear and you're going to want to go ahead and search for static meshes now i'm just going to go ahead and narrow it down by deco right there and let me go ahead and find a good one that we can use. Something not too big because we're going to be shooting it. Um, I saw a statue that was pretty cool, but we already used it. Ooh, this one looks pretty neat. See how excited I got there? I think I got a little overexcited <laughs> when I saw that statue. But okay, so here is how you turn a static mesh into a physics object. The very first thing you need to do is double click it, and then its properties are going to pop up. And let me just go ahead and shrink this a little bit. There we go. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to add a collision I don't a collision mesh I guess you could call I guess you could call I guess you could call it. So if you go ahead and click this button it shows the collision. And that's a nice collision mesh, but we want something even more simple because the more simple your collision mesh is, the faster it's going to load during game time. So this is actually a pretty good one right here, but if you go ahead and up to collision you change it to 6 DLP simplified collision and go ahead and replace it it's going to give you the most basic collision and for this tutorial since I'm just demonstrating you know we're not really making a real advanced game I'm just demonstrating what collision is this works a little bit better than that more advanced collision so if you have a mesh that doesn't even have collision that's how you would add it just going up to this collision dropbox down here and choosing a collision and hitting yes now that's all we really need to do but another thing we might want to do is change the mass scale now if you hover over it says it basically is the amount of mass in it so by default it's one but if we go ahead and change it like to 0.25 then this object becomes less massive so why would we want to change the mass for example whenever we shoot it and the mass is one it's going to move around a little bit but if it's less massive whenever we shoot it it's really going to move around since you know it's a lot easier to move when an object is less massive so those are the, those are the two properties that we really need to be concentrating on so once we got that taken care of just go ahead and hit X and we are good to go however we probably want to make sure that we save this so if we go ahead and right click and hit find package we can just go ahead and find this package and save it and we should be good to go. Oh, it's going to take a long time to save, are you? Oh, let me see if I have a story to tell you guys. Nope, I don't. So now that this object is saved, we can finally add it to our screen. So go ahead and make sure you have this object selected. And we can actually just go ahead and X out of this content browser. And since we have that object selected, all we need to do is right click anywhere on a screen and hit add 
rigid body and it's going to add our rigid body right there so now we got our new and improved static mesh with all our physics properties added to our gaming environment however it's not complete yet what we need to do is with it selected go ahead and hit F4 on your keyboard and what this does is it brings up the properties for this KA actor and by the way I probably didn't mention this but a KA actor is different than a regular static mesh because a KA actor is basically an object that has physics properties applied to it so a static mesh like this wall over here we can shoot it but it's not going to move or anything since you know it's just a static mesh it's uh, its purpose is to stay there and not move however this KA actor whenever we shoot it it's going to move bounce around do a bunch of cool stuff so what we need to do is we need to make sure we have selected wake on level start this basically means as soon as our level starts then it's gonna start acting like a physics object so of course that's what we want they should probably have this selected by default so you know if anyone's watching out there from uh, you know the unreal company you know you might want to look into that so anyways just go ahead and hit X and now this is good to go this is gonna be active as soon as the level starts however for the purposes of this tutorial what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be right clicking and hitting add static mesh so now we have something to compare it to a physics statue and a regular static mesh statue so let me go ahead and rebuild everything just because I haven't built everything in a while so I want to make sure everything's up to date and once it's built I'll give you guys a demonstration of let me just, oh, it's not bad not bad so close and hit play from here now check it out whenever I shoot this one that's my static mesh it isn't moving but whenever I shoot this one oh look at him go flying oh and he's yep he fell off the edge there but that's basically a difference between adding a static mesh and a KA actor which basically is well a static mesh that you can shoot and move around definitely a lot cooler so there you go there you guys have it a physics object introduction so if you didn't quite understand what you know something about this tutorial trust me just watch the upcoming tutorials and I'm gonna be covering everything I covered in more detail and definitely give you guys a better understanding of physics objects so we definitely have a lot of work to go concerning physics and also advanced game development and I'm looking forward to it so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial